Hello there everyone and welcome to this video with me here today where I will be talking about the higher states that some of you perhaps are feeling you are ready to go and to embody. So this also aligns with our current shift of Uranus, the planet of deep lightning transmutation through that higher awakening to higher consciousness and the events that somehow align with that. As you know it shifts signs and moved into Taurus. And I was reading from an astrologer who actually said that previous periods of those shifts uh, dating back all kind of like aligned with special events, certain wars like uh, World War, you know, uh, was it the second one? I don't know, the, th the first one, I don't know. And Civil War and then the, what was it? Uh, a war, you know, for freedom, for uh, the states. And... Uh, you know, we are now at this threshold where probably a lot of people are asking themselves where are the current events uh, leading into and where we're currently being moved to or aligned with and whether that's all just predestined. And what I'm feeling is basically that the nature of the change, as you know, we're each experiencing that change where we are currently at, at our own level of embodiment. It's never uniform for all of us. So that's the first thing to consider. The second thing is I was shown that this is more this transformation of values because you know Taurus is our system of values, it's ruled by Venus. And in truth, it's all about that higher consciousness precipitation through the values that we have, you know, even towards Mother Nature, the environment, everything that's happening. I was recently watching a National Geographic posting pictures on Instagram about plastics and all the issues there and all the issues at hand and you know that so much was happening even here where i live which used to be a really pretty rural, rural and safe environment where i first moved here but then all of a sudden it started to change and i've shared this with you before that now poking mother nature from all directions and a lot of you a lot of us might feel now at this time that it's kind of like enough we've kind of reached our threshold of how much we can handle at this level of the external pressure and the environment and the conditions okay so i'm going to share with you my own example what i was currently embodying and integrating because the higher state of awareness truly when these things happen is to move beyond any perception without a doubt to trust that the reality we're living in my temporarily, you know, as situations and conditions not seem perfect, but the world we live in, you know, the world at large, the world at its core is perfect. So the same goes for us. Our core is always perfect. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful being of, of love, a being of divine love. Yet around it, surrounding it, many times there's different layers and facets. So the primal nature of the integral yoga teaching there's this beautiful book we have at home i was gifted that book actually from sri aurobindo about integral or integration yoga and he describes that you basically can serve humanity you can serve the world at large you can be a greater vessel if you're still dealing with the consciousness of the collective and i know i talk to people a lot of times they all mention the word collective and we all have a different idea of what the collective represents. Some people will say, well, a collective is the group I'm currently exchanging with or my group. Or some people will say, well, it's the collective of, of the matrix here on Earth. And, you know, people will have their own perspectives. But when I mention the collective, it's basically anything that is not you, your own choice of consciousness, your own choice of will, the determination and devotion to embody a state where you're currently at and you unanimously within all your being wish to achieve that inner union so this is in yogic tra tradition and a yogic experience is considered as that state of union that internally you connect to the world in a very neutral benevolent way but we have to see all the aspects where we're not really being benevolent and this is every time we complain or we banter about things and you know people always say well that's just a little banter now i'm back to myself you know it's kind of like steaming off and 
a higher consciousness does not steam off, does not say, well, I'm unloading here this you or, you know, the society and I'm unburdening myself because a higher consciousness within us does not deal or concern with these things or facets of life anyway. So anyhow, and I want to talk about how important this is becoming for those of you who really wish to move deeper into your ascension, which is not now just this contemplative idea or ideal you might have in, in your reality, but this true bringing yourself to a state where you can reach higher dreams. So recently I've, I've um, sang a song and the first, it was a channeled song, as you know, I received this channeled song. So the first uh, wording or the first phrase was, I am letting go of my desires. Finally, I'm going or getting higher, ready to become more. Now I know. So <laughs> this spoke about releasing the lesser desires or expectations. It's not just our personal reality, but we also probably all hold an aspect of us that somehow relates to the world the way we want to see it, right? We want people to behave this way. We want our nature to be protected a certain way. We want the cities to look a certain way. We want the environment to be protected. And certain people do not concern about that at all. That doesn't mean they're neutral or benevolent. That means they're unaware. However, within many facets and levels of awareness, once you're studying your transformation, transmutation and transfiguration process of ascension in your body, you will see that you will come across these many layers. And at each threshold, you will kind of be at an inner initiation level where you will go even deeper or you will kind of fall prey to everything that's happening outside of you, everything that's happening in our external world. Um, so when the life force mastery, which, you know, I talk about all the time because this is clearly what I'm here to do, um, is really aligned with, with the inner core, we will always feel when these things happen, like, you know, the world will always get even crazier. You know, it's what's happening now with this new birthing of our planet. And it's something that we can't fix. You know, we have to surrender this control that we have to fix something or someone or even the world at large because it doesn't exist. So we have this perception that by being active, uh, we will change the world. But it's, it's not the right kind of active. I mean, there is active and then there is active through higher consciousness. So as Sri Aurobindo describes, uh, you can't truly really be a yogi. You can't really be working for the betterment of the planet if you haven't surrendered this uh, state where you're consciously, uh, when, you, when you're constantly assimilating the world as it is, you're saying, well, the world is like this and you're constantly describing it as it is. Okay, so one thing is reality. The other is where is it leading to? And none of us truly knows the bigger picture. None of us truly knows divine plan at its source level. It is all of us together. We are the plan itself, utilizing itself, you know, becoming itself through the many facets of creation that we all represent. What I want to say next is that this withdrawal of life force is basically the biggest gift. And this is what I've recently experienced as well. Uh, so it's kind of like you create, you create, you create, you create, you're active, you're active. The more you do this life force withdrawal, which is not the same as being passive, it's just you withdraw the level of accumulation which you've piled up so far. Let's say this is the level you were operating so far and it's the circle around you, yeah? So when you are ready to uh, reach beyond that internalization, which is reflected in the external state you're living in and how you relate to the world, suddenly things will start to get agitated, you know, like they will start to agitate you or trigger you. And suddenly you will say, well, it used to be okay the way I live. Why isn't it anymore? And it's not because the condition is changing. So I've noticed this here where I live in the five years, like I've shared with you, the changes were not always all for the better. But the thing is also that I've grown to be more sensitive, that I've grown to work through life force, that things that maybe in the past few years ago didn't bother me now completely trigger me, you know, in a way that my energy, if I, if I associate with that, if, if I make it my problem, my life force will start to drain. It will start to deplete, you know, be depleted in my body and will start to notice this withdrawal. So the, the natural withdrawal of life force comparison to that withdrawal that happens through the outset stimulants, which then take away your life force, which is anything we give our power to, because we think we somehow need to, because we think this is being good and active and uh, you know, doing things the right way, but truly not always at the highest level of consciousness. So when you can do or materialize this withdrawal of life force within yourself, you will create this 
again, this neutral space or this zone, which is the new embodiment of where you are now, not where you used to be, you know, even a couple months ago or a couple of weeks or days, I don't know, you know, depending on your process. But usually we're kind of going through these cycles in months and years and um, we're going to notice these things, how they're changing. So when changes like that happen, this withdrawal will be a natural process once you're becoming consciously engaged with what really does concern you, which is your inner expansion leading towards cosmic union and ascension. And at the other side, you know, because there's always just, it's just two, basically it's just two, two options. Whether you become the master of yourself or you don't. And when you don't, you're always going to choose something that will either affect you or you will have a belief it needs to affect you or it concerns you. In truth, whatever is happening with the world at large, from a perspective of spirit, does not concern us. <laughs> you know, and I mean that in the most benevolent way, because we're all a part of what's being co-created. But when I say this, I mean it with the intention of something that's not our own contribution that we came here with on this planet. And we make other things somehow valuable, you know, through what we view in the world, what's happening. And we're saying, this is bad, this is wrong. We're starting to criticize and judge um, the temporary state of our shifting world, which is where a lot of us get hung up on. Yeah, this is where we kind of, uh, this is kind of where we failed a little test that we, we know so well in spirit and when people meditate. But then this happens and once again, it's like we're going in a loop, okay? So the withdrawal of life force is when anything lesser that no longer serves your process now is surrendered into a bigger cycle so that you can expand now from the state. And this is why I'm making this video to explain that when this happens and you're going to notice this in your reality yourself, sometimes things will naturally start to dissolve and fall away. And it might scare you at first because you won't understand why it's happening and you will see it as a loss. When truly, when you give it time, when you give it, you know, that space of reflection through divine neutrality, you will see it grow. And through that growth and expansion, you will see new things being birthed and presented to you as options. So when we talk about opportunities and options, it's not sometimes how people view them that it's like many, many options and they're all, they're all scattered somewhere up there and we're kind of reaching for them. No, we are always in our core, you know, from the self-awareness perspective of our ascended self, the core of our being always creates. So the options are always extended in, in like a ring circle around us. They're not like somewhere out there and we need to constantly grab them. So the ego thinks in this way because it, it doesn't yet know itself in its fullness. It thinks I am it when it's not truly really the whole picture. So when you become this bigger expansion of you grow into yourself, you, you, you kind of like self-realize that way. You perceive that everything that is an opportunity is created from your core. So your life force creates. And I've been teaching this how to create through life force for I think a while now. Um, but sometimes it still comes to, it falls to deaf ears because People think, well, we need to visualize and make it like this and like that. The truth is that this tantric union, which is this union with your life force, uh, constant flow, constant precipitation of life moving through you, is the highest aspect of how we can create as humans, is the biggest gift of life. This is when we can actually attune to life at its, at its core, at its purest essence potential level. But we've developed many levels. We say we have to visualize and make it hard. And, you know, this is like how we've been creating through the matrix. And when we say we'll visualize and use the mind to create the thoughts, well, this was the matrix design. But the organic human, the new human, the new earth, which is the new template of the crystalline grid as well, we talk about that, is basically that foundational, natural, organic cultivation through life force, which is the essence, the very essence of who you are, how uniquely you are, how life force is manifested through you, because we each do that in a unique way, in a unique fashion. We are different and very beautiful, unique beings. And once we start to realize that, we won't associate ourselves even with the world events anymore. You know, um, recently we were joking around that whenever you get too involved with things like, why are they doing this? Why are they, do you know, like, why are they chopping these trees? And you will see the difference when you're simply acknowledging it and when you're kind of going for it. Like, you know, you're trying to chase what happened and you can't really change it, like I said, from an identity perspective. As a group of beings, we're engaging when we're doing our own purpose each in our own way and coming together also at the same time where we're being individual and we're being independent and at the same time we're learning the, the intertwining game so this is how we're learning to come together but when we judge the temporary state 
it always kind of hooks us in what's actually happening and, and that means we, we've identified with that which is happening and a lot of times we will feel the essence of that separation that flows through that which is still very chaotic sometimes and expressive in that way and we will kind of associate with it and now we're in chaos now we are confused now we're like this because we somehow absorb that and this is not supposed to be like that so i feel that this shift of uranus into taurus now again the cycle coming is who are we really at war with okay so if before we had these warring events now we think oh it's going to happen again well we're already at war with ourselves but i think the biggest war we are in now is the war we have with nature and that shows our disconnect with source because when you disconnect vertically you will also experience that disconnect horizontally which is all of life and creation all the beauty of nature everything that makes us completely attuned with you know what resources are truly beneficial for us and their natural resources and how we can use them and when we don't use them we produce things artificially and through means of creating lots of entropy as you know then we're actually not being in tune okay so this is this is that um, that withdrawal when when you notice yourself doing that will be necessary as that part of it because in order for you to grow into this new expanded state you're going to have to surrender uh, certain ways of how you were and sometimes people will say but i'm an activist you know i've talked about being um, consciously activists in my elohim message which was about that be an activist but the way you do things the way that's necessary you know when masters say only do that which is necessary don't do that and this and this and that and get lost in the world of ego which is the world of separation okay um so i want to say now my own example because i was getting so involved also i had this initiation through what's happening here in our village and in nature and as you know they've been cutting down so many trees and changing lots of things and you know there's always littering and things and there's this chaos and tourists are gonna come and what's gonna be in the summer are we gonna be like having miles of cars here what's gonna happen and the moment we start to think about this we're giving it power we're giving the power to that reality which is less than we can't what spirit recently showed me is that we can't truly be a vessel for this higher light if we have our own projected reality of what is happening how we perceive it as a temporary state or we want to make it a certain way our own way okay so those are two different examples basically the same in its in its expression two sides of the same coin but spirit showed me that we cannot act from this higher state and it's just so needed now it's so necessary that these higher consciousness extensions as us fellow human beings conscious human beings um, start utilizing this within ourselves through that awareness so sometimes we think well i'm a vessel i want to be a vessel one thing is one thing becoming that is something totally different so we have to surrender a lot of our ideas ideals projections uh, temporary simulation of the environment and really constantly have that like it's um, shared in the integral yoga constant state of feeling the divinity within and a lot of times we forget when you get boggled down you know bogged down with these events you will get frustrated because you somehow stopped feeding your inner source connection whatever that is for you i've learned that in my reality when i do all these three main essences of my divine signature which is the singing right which is the creation angel within me that sings the songs of life so that i'm rejuvenating in that essence um, aspect then i do i have to do this tantrika yoga to to bring that element of this blissful presence in the body and then i also do the sacred dance and if i'm not nurturing that if i'm not nourishing through that i will often get kind of also frustrated because i'm depleting myself i'm not valuing my source connection as it is on heim or we would say as it is it is vertically and i'm not honoring it horizontally because i'm not expressing what i am in the human level so the human is that expressive state so after i was in that initiation it was quite lasting i feel you know and i still had a little bit of that sadness left with everything that's happening and i knew you know when you're truly a master of yourself it doesn't mean you don't care but you're not constantly feeling sad you still you have to constantly feel joy because through that joy you're helping everything every element in life to replenish to revitalize even when there's intense uh, interventions in nature you know in the environment so when we say well it's hard to do that it's hard we're usually hooked into something and we're allowing something of the external world to somehow bind us or even you know 
create a complete bondage through which we are not living in the world through that principle as you know be in the world but not of it yeah so I had a dream afterwards and in the dream I was walking and I think it was with my mother we were both walking in this dense forest it was all dark all these beautiful trees and we heard like you know the sound of the chain you know like a chainsaw you know they were <laughs> tearing them down we're like oh no they're cutting down trees again but the way i said it in the dream was very neutral i said oh look they're just doing it again i didn't say like oh I, they're doing it again you know it's like total difference in the energy expression and then i saw the trees that were already down and i was just looking at them in a very loving compassionate way i was simply acknowledging all these trees and saying like i know them i said well this tree used to be my friend oh i knew this one. Oh, that one as well well they're now gone well thank you for being my friends it was it was very beautiful but it was the true state of that compassionate rich graceful presence that we can offer our planet at this time instead of getting always worried always bogged down by these events always thinking what's the next event you know when i was at the deepest level of feeling this i remember when i saw all these clearing space is done artificially and, and, and very fast on purpose like that I went like oh where can I step where can I even go which path to go I'm gonna be afraid even to go outside and meet new conditions like this and to see them to witness them and then I was shown through my own initiation this example because when they actually cut this huge band of trees because they're actually laying these high-tech electricity cables which you know they're deadly very deadly it's a slow kind of death, truly, and very much a cancer genus, as you know. So I actually said, I'm not going there anymore because it's disgusting. I don't want to see that. And to reach a level of that neutrality does not happen through avoidance, as you probably know. So what happened, I was running and I was so into it that I forgot I actually went that path. And I was like, oh my God, no, no, I'm going to have to see it now. And I didn't turn, right? I just said okay okay I'm just not gonna look I'm not gonna look I'm not gonna look but you know inquisitive as I am you know playful as I am I something in me it's like life force is stronger life force is in the body it's not in the mind so the whole body takes over right it's almost like your car sometimes wants to go right but you go left right because something within you that force just knows where it needs to go so I was doing that and I just looked and I'm like oh it's devastating oh my gosh it's terrible I still had that feeling it's 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 terrible right the next time it happened again I wanted to go somewhere but I ended up again running it's like not again only idiot does that right <laughs> and I'm running and I just I was just looking and that time they already removed all the trunks of the trees they, they put a huge pile they did like these whole huge holes in the earth you know and the smell came out because you know all these uh, worms and everything that they they start to dry up then and ugh, it was just disgusting and i was running past it i just said it does not concern me you know the temporary state does not concern me i just i just feel grateful that i can i can be the presence that brings love into this depleted area now into this area with the lack of love which if i let's say i were in that state or I'm complaining or I'm feeling victimized or I'm feeling oppression or feeling hurt for what they supposedly did I'm not acting from the highest so as many people now are saying well we need to clear the collective we need to clear the collective you know I don't always agree with the way that's being done because a lot of people are constantly recycling energy in the collective it's not truly transmutation transmutation at its highest so that transfiguration can eventually occur um, and that first level which is transformation which you need to achieve within yourself to even know what you're doing <laughs> that's how it is so in order for transfiguration to even be possible to even be considered as possible you have to do it from a higher state it does not come from this what many people say oh i'm this star seed and i'm just cleaning the space and i'm transforming and you know it's like as long as you're still doing it from this lower consciousness which is somehow hooked into the matrix through fear through victimized consciousness and separation it's truly not a work of transformation you know which uh, transmutation which cannot lead to transfiguration so i've shared with you before that there's many levels of how this work on the planet is currently being done 
there are beings beautiful beings who as volunteer souls they came here to really transmute a lot of the dense energies but in order for them to truly do it they also have to master themselves and that's why i always say it doesn't matter whether you're a starseed like worker whatever you call yourself to be if that wisdom is not integrated in your body if your ascension process is not complete in your human embodiment right now right here it ain't gonna work you can call yourself special whatever um but it doesn't work that way you know you need to penetrate yourself first to be able to penetrate you know and, and transmute and transcend these aspects so we say well these are dense aspects and that way through that conscious self work okay so i wanted to share with you that these are all similar synchronous yeah ways how we operate so recently i was talking to a friend because she was sharing with me how she's more transmuting these energies and she has these dreams at night about that and i always felt because i it was so much energy channeled through me as a pillar yeah and i always thought well i'm transmuting too and then spirit said no you know it's not the same you are synthesizing the pillars we synthesize you know it's i was i was seeing this vision when i closed my eyes how there was this hill and the pillar is in the middle and it's like all the rays of creation go out and all these beings like we call them volunteer souls star seeds whatever what have you they're all kind of utilizing this this wave that the pillar does through this um synthesis and they're through that synthesis they each have it's almost like they can create or perform their sacred work of that transmutation so it's a work that's unanimous and it's happening in synchronicity with all different phases that are all one process and i've told you this is going to be all more in depth described in the book about the grand design which is going to uh, reboot itself very soon i guess so um let me see what else i wanted to talk to you about considering this Um one next thing I want to talk about is how we really need to be in the body fully for this transformation to occur. Um a lot of times as you know when people had these what what are called soul traumas they were learning to leave the body. I have to give you one example again with uh, my own mother because all her life she had initiations through pain, right? So I I think I've shared with you this before how she always had injuries and pains whatever what have you. And recently she got a little sick again, you know, and she didn't know the reason. So she was um she did something, you know, with this uh you buy this uh, silicone something, you know, you you fix your pipe, you know, and it has like this sour smell. <clears throat> so first she started to cough and she said maybe I got a little of that poison. And it's like, well, it doesn't say on the box it's poisonous. All of a sudden, you know, she really quickly moved from that just feeling a little bad or coughing to really being sick. So the next day I see her in bed and she's totally withdrawn. And I'm calling her. I'm like, "Where are you? Are you alive?" And I I keep asking her, "Are you still alive?" And she's like, "Why are you asking me that?" And later I got it. I'm asking her because her she continues to when something happens like a shock that's shocking for her, like an injury or a pain or trauma that reminds her of something that happened maybe in a previous lifetime, she always goes and she kind of like leaves the soul and she's like wants to be this this embodied. So she always drifts and she's had many experiences like that or she faints or goes away or something like that happens. And I'm calling her back and she says, "No, please don't talk to me. Oh, it's too loud." And I'm like, "Wake up. You need to know what you're doing. Why are you here for? You need to do the healing yourself." You know, sometimes I can be really harsh. I can be strict because when it's time, it's time, you know. Um, the creation angels, I always say we both love and we spank, okay? <laughs> so the thing is, I've noticed this withdrawal and she's like she was totally absent. And the thing is, you can't heal when you're absent. You're like surrendering your body to some sort of faith. Oh, God will heal me or, you know, what people do. And I said, "No, you don't understand how powerful your life was until you had that experience." And she had it because I called her back and the reason why she couldn't hear me, she was so sensitive to my voice. I couldn't even touch her. I was like, "Oh, no, just let me sleep." She was sleeping all day while sleeping. It was more like um, you know, having those um when you're kind of drifting off and you're not here, you're not there. and was like sleep when you rejuvenate she was really absent she was <laughs> trying to escape and then i said to her look do this exercise when you're deeply inhaling your presence your full illumined being into your body just do that bring it into every cell draw back your consciousness 
stop escaping, face yourself, confront the fear that you do this every time you have a sort of chaotic event or a fearful event, a trigger, and then start pulling your life force into the body. You can even use the color red, because red is that revitalizing nature of life force in the body. So she did that. I come like 10 minutes after, her eyes are starting to sparkle. I said, look, you're back. She starts to smile. And the reason why she couldn't hear me, it's like, because you know when you're a little off, you know when you are drifting to sleep at night, the music gets louder if you still have music on or something like that. So that was the case. And I just said, look, are you present now? How are you feeling? Because before her head was deeply in pain and she had uh, stomach pain. I said, how are you feeling now? She said, oh, I'm feeling much better. It was like 10 minutes of difference. I said, do you see how miraculous you are when you're in your body in full presence, when you don't fear whatever is happening? You know, maybe she had a trigger with that, with that smell and it reminded her maybe of a lifetime where she, would, she was poisoned or something. And that just memory created the disease or illness in the body. Sometimes that happens. And when you create that weakening of the system, then you are a great prey for viruses, you know, and everything, <laughs> bacterial life. Let's say entities or, you know, expressions of life that just are dying for us to do that. So going back, um, when she was present, she finally had appetite again, you know, so I made her soup. And I actually just, you know, it was a great example of when we're not present, we can't heal. So a lot of people give their bodies to some indefinite faith or some miraculous healing happening outside of themselves. Like I surrender. One thing is to have a surrender approach to how the healing takes place through you. You don't control it through your ego. You don't think about it in the mind. You don't control the outcome because you can when you do things through life force. The other is to let go of your body. Like you no longer want to have your body when something happens. This is not the same as surrender and people can a very simply mistaken to two and it's not the same thing. This is also very important in terms of being with the environment, with what's happening, with other people, being conscious, being neutral, bringing your love, bringing your life force, but not getting involved with the temporary states, conditions, uh, you know, how the world is, how it's supposed to be. So for ultimate transmutation, which leads to transfiguration, eventually you have to be so fully present in the body. And if you're, le if you're noticing the leakage uh, out of your body, you can instantly recharge just through that simple exercise. When you're drawing life force into your body, you see your cells are starting to sparkle and illuminate. And then you can put uh, the color red as well in your body, in your aura. And then again, moving into the cells, like this liquid light coming in it's deeply deeply meaningful and we had our own experience so i was a mentor for that <laughs> again as always um what else so one other thing that spirit showed me in relation to this is how we many times complain about the weather patterns and we say well the weather's like this the weather's like that and we influence it and it actually becomes like that so we also get involved we say oh the weather is like this and i remember years back i still used to do that as well now I just accept weather how it is. And when I accept it, I'm basically trans transforming it. So we always think we are transforming through force. We don't. We, we transform through allowance. And now in this year of the feminine principle playing out, coming out really strongly in our embodiments, we're really learning that fine line in this mastery of surrendered presence, this surrendered consciousness in our bodies. And how does that actually look like? And how is that felt? So if we don't like a certain sacred space, we can say, well, I'm not going to be there where they're chopping trees, but you can still be neutral about it. And you can choose another location, or even if you're going through that location, you can still do it with love and awareness. Okay. So that's that. Ah, oh, okay. So one last thing I want to talk about is this importance of manifesting through this orgasmic nature of our being the meaning of sacred orgasm, how you can use it to replenish or vitalize yourself. And when you're going to work at higher levels of consciousness, you can do that with the planetary life force. You can help cultivate your own orgasmic uh, expression of life or life essence to heal others. This is a very strong aspect of mine. When I do that, if I'm, if I'm sharing with someone and they're a part of that healing, they're instantly going to start shift to shift. So if you want to learn higher ways of mastery, there are courses available on my page. So you have Life Force Tantrica Mastery. 
you have Cosmic Ascension Union, you also have the Tantric uh, Sacred Dance for uh, this cultivation that helps you to do that physically as well. That's all on my page. But there is also a mini audiobook about Tantrika and the meaning of the sacred orgasm, which is now becoming very, very meaningful. I was doing this now for a week, <laughs> this practice, because I kind of let it go for a while. I knew that's very important in my path. But then all of a sudden I, I got this nudge, I have to do it because this is how I'm going to expand into this bigger cir circle of what I can offer to this planet and the healing, which is not just healing through visualization and you know, many things we do in different rays of consciousness, that the very essence of who we are is the spark of life. Life is pure life force. When you learn to cultivate orgasmic life force, you're going to potentialize your being, you're going to create enough light quotient so you can start to expand into this new uh, body flow. So many times people would think, well, something's wrong because things where I am now used to function, why they no longer do? Well, guess what, right? You're expanding, you're moving to this, from this threshold into a new cycle. You want to, you want to work more magnanimously, you know, you want to be more impactful of the world. So um, this is something totally different than, let's say, doing it from a lesser state. So that's why that is so important. It's very important to observe now whatever is happening, to not get invested. You know, we invest our life force energy into so many things. Then people are constantly wondering why they're feeling drained. Well, if we're feeling drained, there is a reason for it always. So we always say, well, what's the energies? We're always blaming the energies. Well, what is the energy? It interacts with you always it's a conscious interaction so i've shared with you before that the electric and magnetic principle within us need to be in constant balance so you know if we are pure consciousness and it's this consciousness that assimilates our bodies every atom in the body which makes up the whole of our body every day you have to assimilate your whole body you have to regroup every day which means it's not like you do one meditation you go to this course you do this oh you don't need to do anything ever again because you're already enlightened <laughs> it doesn't go like this you know, so every day we are using cultivation, we're using practices for mastery. Um, no master is ever a master of everything and then it stops. I've shared this before. A master of self is constantly growing and expanding in its awareness and expression of life force. So, you know, everything is available on my pages. You know where to find all of that. Um, there's also many new audiobooks that I've recently channeled. They're all super good and juicy on the higher topics. This is a part of my Elohim series. If you wish to somehow support me as a part of my, I want to share this with you again. Everything in my life was just gone. It was just dissolving. And a part of me was like, oh, what's happening? And just when I was feeling like I didn't get, I didn't get an influx um, of abundance for, for quite a while. And then I was like, what is this about? And then spirit showed me, well, you manifest through life force. And now it's, it's with, in this state of withdrawal. So it's kind of like on hold because now it's assimilating a new quotient of life to give birth on this new level. Like, you know, you're doing this implosion so you can explode again at the new level. That's how they're showing this to me. And I understand this, but sometimes it can be frustrating, you know, even as a human to experience that. And spirit does understand that. As the human counterpart sometimes gets a little like, oh my gosh, you know, what's happening? It's all kind of dissolving and it's withdrawing because the higher state of this consciousness interaction and uh, life force mastery requires much less doing than it is this consciousness expression that's doing more work than we think we need to do through the through the actions you know of <laughs> the human mind so i was shown that um, the second, very second that when I get this email all of a sudden you know these guys write to me I was in this YouTube partnership with them and I didn't receive a lot of money it's just sometimes a few bucks you know <laughs> every two months or something and they suddenly send me this message like oh sorry we're gonna have to part ways something doesn't work I'm like what am I now dangerous or am I now liable or something just because I'm talking about these things and then all of a sudden I just knew it's okay because I felt it's a message because I was liberating myself completely I was liberating myself of all these things that I think I need to do achieve you know, like it's here, right? I am letting go of my desires. And this is not the true desires with, with, with they come from the core. But these desires are kind of like around as different potentials, which now you've expanded. Now the potentials have to reassemble just as well, you know, so you're kind of viewing it always from the core, but because you, you're expanding, the potentials reassemble in a way, right? So they you regroup in a way. 
So I just do it. It's a part of that liberation because my being, when you're a truly illumined being, you're, you're a completely free spirit. That's the thing. And in many cases, we, we feel illumination is something that it's not. But how I was shown is, is in the human form, illumination can only occur through becoming the full embodiment of the free spirit. So in any way, we're still, still having a, a dependency on something, which is not the same as that conscious interaction. And we're all contributing to each other and to the betterment of the whole. But it's more like that dependency. If, if I don't get that from here, how will I survive or how will I manage this or that? But it was a message also that what sustained me so far will no longer work in this new, you know. So Spirit said also that at this higher level, which is even more, everything is even more unconditional, even more free because it's not tainted through all the commercials, whatever it is. I said, so now people need to engage more. So it's like it has to, how it's given, how it's shared in such a pure fashion, it also has to be reciprocated. But as you know, sometimes this is very challenging because people don't usually understand what it means to create through life force. It's complete surrender. You don't know where uh, the physical support or money, things like that even come from sometimes. You are a complete loss of will and you're just like, okay, you know, <laughs> have you read the fine print? Okay. <laughs> it's, it's funny sometimes and yet it can be challenging as well for the human. So um, for those of you who've already been supporting my work, I really want to thank you. But now I feel it's even more important to do so if you feel called through the uh, energy exchange because <laughs> these resources are just like, gone, you know. So it's, it's much less safe um, and it feels more like, ooh, you know, even more trust. Every ring of the sacred circle we move and expand out into gets even more. Uh, you know <laughs> more challenging in a way but actually also more beautiful because it's more authentic and it's more genuine so that's what i wanted to share because it's a part of this message of complete liberation until we are not there's always going to be something pulling us you know and i always feel this i feel when there's a hook i'm like oh i don't like it you know i can literally feel it in my physical body but as a human it's not always so easy to transcend that so sometimes we need more examples, more practice, you know, patting yourself in the back. That's all fine. Remind yourself you're doing good either way. So anyway, my beloveds, take care. I wish you as always so much joy and appreciation of the beauty of life in a neutral state where divine love can truly flow through. Otherwise, it's not gonna because <laughs> you have too many other, um, you know, things piled up within you. So this true force that's just pure love cannot move through. And when it moves through you, it can create miracles and it does it's already doing it so as always with so much love wisdom and power take care and i'll talk to you again in the next update next time real soon bye bye Jacob.